All right, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about operations of fractions. Now this is going to be primarily an upper level math based channel and this really isn't a difficult topic by any means or that high concept of a topic. But I often notice my high schoolers have difficulty with fractions. Now that's perfectly understandable. Most students haven't done fractions of any kind since mid-middle school. So I think it's important sometimes just to have a quick refresher course on exactly how to do these and how to work with these. So today we're going to be talking about the operations of them. And of course by that I mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Just the basics. We're not going to get into anything really fancy today. We'll save that for another time. But let's talk about these basic operations. So I am actually going to start with multiplication. I know that seems a little odd. Whenever you think of uh, you know, adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying, you want to start with adding and subtracting first. That seems like the easy thing to do, doesn't it? I mean, 2 plus 2, right? But in fractions, adding and subtracting is actually a significant step up from multiplication and division. And there's a couple reasons I want to do multiplication first. One of them you'll see later and I'll talk about in a bit. But the other is just because it is much simpler. There really isn't much to a multiplication problem when it comes to fractions. The numerators don't have to be the same, of course. They don't ever have to be the same for these basic operations. And the denominators don't have to be the same either. Now that's not always something you'll find, and we'll talk about that, but this one being a 10 and this one being a 3 does not matter. That's perfectly fine. So we're going to go ahead and solve this. Now the, all you have to do to solve a multiplication problem with fractions is multiply the, the numerators together. Not Sorry, not the nominators. The numerators, the numbers on the top of the fraction, and the denominators together, the numbers on the bottom of the fraction. So we will multiply 6 and 5, and that'll become our new numerator for our answer. Now, 6 times 5, of course, is going to be 30. Now, to get the denominator, we'll multiply 10 by 3, which is also 30. Well, look at that. I mean, that came out very nicely, right? 30 over 30, or, of course, 1. Now, I personally, in my own classroom, I wouldn't care if you answered as 30 over 30 or 1. That's a fine answer to me regardless. In this case, well, yeah, I'd probably write 1. That's a lot simpler, a lot less writing, isn't it? But, uh, I mean, I don't generally care about improper fractions. So, that's all there is to multiplication. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do another one because multiplying fractions is kind of fun, right? It's simple. I mean, it's a heck of a lot more fun than whenever you're looking at adding or subtracting them, in my opinion. So, I'd like to do this. Now, in this case, Yet again, we don't have to have the same denominators. Numerators are different. We don't care. That's fine. So in this case, we have 1 over 4 times 4 over 3. So what we're going to do to get our answer is multiply these numerators, 1 times 4, and get 4. Simple as that. And then 4 times 3. That'll give us 12 in our denominator, or 1 third. But 4 over 12 is fine with me. That's all there is to multiplication. It's a very, very simple topic, honestly. So that's all you have to do for multiplication. Simple as that. We'll move on to division now. Division can be a little more confusing. Now I've noticed students have significantly more trouble with division, but it's not that more different of a concept or not that much difference in a concept. So. There's one simple thing you got to remember. Whenever you're doing a division problem, you can turn it into a multiplication problem. Now, all you have to do is look at your second fraction here, the second fraction in the equation. If you make that into its reciprocal, flip the fraction essentially, it'll become a multiplication problem. Uh, some of my students like to call this the stop dot flip method, I think that's what it's called. I never learned it like that, but that seems to really resonate with them. So what essentially it means is you stop on the first one. You don't do anything to that. You leave it just like 6 over 3. Now the second one means dot. Now we'll turn that division sign into a dot. Now what does a dot mean in mathematics? Multiply, of course. It's just like an X or a time sign. And then flip. Now that flip refers to the reciprocal of this third 
part of the equation. So it'll become 4 over 1 instead of 1 over 4. So now we have turned this into a multiplication problem in which, just like before, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So we're going to have 6 times 4, that'll give us 24, and then 3 times 1, or 3 of course, and we'll end up with 24 over 3 or 8. That's all there is to a division problem. Once you get that little trick down, you are set. Now there's one other way that I personally learned to do this. I feel like I'll go ahead and explain it this way, just because why not? This is how I learned it. This is how it worked for me. So it may help a few other people. If the stop, stop dot flip method works for you, by all means, use that. But this is just another option, essentially. Now, this is kind of a version of cross multiplying. Uh, essentially, what I like to do is multiply the first numerator by the second denominator, and the first denominator by the second numerator. Essentially, make an x here with this fraction to determine what our answer will be. So essentially, to find out our answer, we take 7 times 4, and that'll give us the numerator. You always want to keep it, uh, keep the answer to your multiplication problem here in the same place as it was as that number was in the first part of the equation. So we're going to keep this in the numerator. 7 times 4, of course, is going to be 28 here. So we'll have 28 in the numerator of our answer. And then we get to take 3 and multiply it by 5, completing that x right there. Now, since 3 is in the denominator, we will keep this number in the denominator of our answer. 3 times 5 is going to be 15. That'll make our answer 28 over 15. Uh, I know whenever you're trying to explain that method, it does sound a little bit more confusing. It really does. So the stop dot flip method may work better for you, but this is a method that works wonderfully as well. Now, time for addition and subtraction. This is sometimes not the most fun topic in the world, even though everyone thinks generally that it is. Um, now, first off, I want to talk about the most common misconception I've ever seen with addition of fractions. I mean, I even see adults doing this as in addition to students. So don't feel bad if you've always thought that this is how it goes. I always see people saying, ah, this is addition. I just add the numerators and add the denominators. Two plus four is six. Three plus three is six. So obviously the answer to this is one, right? But that is not how we want to do this. This is not at all the correct method, unfortunately. So I want to show you exactly how we do this instead so we can try to break this habit right here. So now let's take that same problem, 2 over 3 plus 4 over 3. Now this is one of the simpler of the addition problems when it comes to fractions. And the reason why that is is because these denominators are both the same. That's the key to any addition or subtraction problem is these denominators being the same number. If they're not the same number, we have to deal with that, which we're going to talk about in our next example problem. But since they're the same, we can go ahead and solve our problem relatively simply. All you do in addition and subtraction problems is add or subtract, in a different case, you know, subtraction case, the numerators. So you are going to add 2 and 4 to get your numerator, and you're not going to do anything with those denominators. Those threes are going to remain a three. In addition and subtraction, the denominator always stays the same once you have gotten those to match. So this problem, our answer is six over three or two, of course, that's all there is to it. Now that's not too bad. It gets a little more complicated whenever our denominators are not the same, as in this case, one over four plus two over three. Now this is a little more complex because we have a four in our denominator here and a three in our denominator here. So obviously whenever we go to solve the problem, we can't just keep the denominator the same, right? I mean, what are we going to make it? So we need to manipulate these numbers so that the denominators are the same. 
Now there's two ways you can generally do this. Occasionally, and this is a rare situation, you can turn one of the numbers into the other. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's like uh, turning a three into a six. You just double it, right? But in this case, three can't turn into four. We, we can't multiply three by some whole number and turn it into four very easily, can we? So we are just going to find their least common multiple. Now to do that, what I like to do is just multiply this number by the denominator over here and multiply this number by the denominator over here. I've always found that just to be the simplest method out there. So to show you exactly what we're doing, we're taking this one over four and multiplying it by the denominator right here, three over three, ta-da. And this side, we will multiply by the denominator on this part of the equation, four. So four over four. Now it seems a little crazy, like how can we just manipulate our equation like that? We're throwing some big numbers, threes and fours in here and just multiplying these parts by different stuff. It kind of seems crazy that we can just do that, right? Actually it isn't, once you think about it. Once you think about what these numbers are, it makes a lot more sense. I mean, what is three over three? Any number over itself is just one, isn't it? So we're not actually changing this one over four or 0.25, right? We're just manipulating how it's written. We're just changing that. Just like here, four over four is still one. We're just gonna change how this two thirds is written. So here's why I wanted to do multiplication first because multiplication comes into play here because we are multiplying these fractions. So let's multiply these. Three plus one, or not three plus one, goodness. Three times one, three, right? And then three times four is gonna be 12. Now that three over 12 is still one fourth, just written in a different way. Okay, here, we're going to multiply those top numbers, the numerators. 2 times 4 will give us 8, and then 3 times 4 will, in fact, give us 12. Ta-da! Our denominators are the same. That's wonderful, right? That's our objective. We did it. So, in this case, now we can just add those numbers straight across the top. 3 plus 8 give us 11 and keep that denominator the same. So we get 11 over 12. Simple as that. Subtraction is the exact same way. My battery's running dead on this camera. I hope I can make this in on time, but I'm going to do this real quick. We have a 5 over 2 minus a 3 over 4. Now we want to make those denominators the same, right? <clears throat> Here, we actually can turn one number into the other. We can turn two into four, right? I mean, just by doubling it. So we can double this, two over two, get that denominator to turn into four. Now, if you prefer the other method where you put a four over here and a two over here, that's fine. The problem will still work perfectly for you, but this does work too. So two, over, two times five, gonna give us 10. Two times two, gonna give us four, minus, 3 over 4, yay, our denominators are the same, we can do this problem. Now subtraction is exactly the same as addition here, really. You just subtract across the top, because we have that little sign right there, instead of add. So 10 minus 3 is going to give us 7, denominator remains the same at 4. That's all there is to it. This isn't too bad, right? I don't think this is too bad. You'll get the hang of it. If you have any problems, I mean, just try them out. Start doing some practice problems. Not too bad. Uh, so that's all for this video. I just wanted to have a quick update, or not really update, review over how to do this stuff.